Mm, that's drunk. For me, when it came to Final Fight, it was love at first sight. I barely saw this game in the arcades, but my older brother insisted on the game being the greatest thing ever. So, when we got our Super Nintendo in Christmas of 1991, not only were we lucky enough to get a Super Nintendo console with two controllers and Super Mario World, but we also got the SNES port of Final Fight, and man, oh man, I was in love. Huge sprites kicking the crap out of other huge sprites with some great looking backgrounds and sound design. It was perfect. It wasn't until much later that I learned the arcade version was about a hundred times better, but at the time, I didn't care. I just liked my SNES Final Fight, despite it lacking multiplayer and an extra playable character. Meanwhile, in NES Land, which I had completely left behind at that point, Capcom quietly released Mighty Final Fight in July of 1993, a spin-off of sorts, similar to how Konami created Kid Dracula for Game Boy as a spin-off of Castlevania. 1993 is very late in the NES lifespan, to the point that at the time, this game felt like taking a step backwards, like why the heck would I bother with an 8-bit Final Fight when I've got the SNES Final Fight already, with Final Fight 2 on the way? Well, you bother because this game is freaking good. As you can see, all the characters are SD or Chibi style, and you can play as Cody, Hagar, or Guy, so right away we've got an improvement over the SNES Final Fight. You can also switch characters if you have to use a continue, so that's cool. Sadly, however, Mighty Final Fight is single player, but still, it's a fast-paced and satisfying beat-em-up that ranks among some of the best on the NES, right up there with stuff like River City Ransom and Battletoads and Double Dragon. You get six lives and three continues to get through five levels with no saves or passwords. Only five levels seems kind of short, but this game's biggest strength is the pacing. This playthrough absolutely flies by without overstaying its welcome, with lots of detail in the settings and backgrounds, plenty of different enemies to take out, many of which having hilariously goofy expressions as they get the crap kicked out of them. And each character can do five different moves, including Hagar with his infamous flying pile driver. What's not to love here? There's weapons like knives, mallets, and throwing stars and there's even a leveling system. Once you get your character to level 4, you unlock another special move, and each character has their own. For Cody, it's a Hadouken-like fireball called a Tornado Sweep. Guy has a Tornado Kick, and Hagar has a Running Clothesline. I like to refer to that one as Stan Hansen's Lariat. These moves can be kinda tricky to pull off since you have to press the B button, and then either left or right on the D-pad with very precise timing. The story is the exact same. Hagar's daughter Jessica is kidnapped by the Mad Gear gang and you gotta get her back. And you'll see some familiar faces like Thrasher, Katana, and Abigail. Plus you get some nifty dialogue here and there like Hagar getting to the final boss and calling him a worthless ball of pond scum. Man, I used to work at a golf course when I was a teenager and I used to have to clean up all the pond scum all over the course. That stuff is no joke. The opening cutscene is great, featuring some really funny pixel art. The only bummer about this game for me is that the enemy names aren't displayed, like this guy here wearing a purple Devo hat. I would have liked to have put a name to a face there. I mean, it's not a huge deal, since if you're familiar with Final Fight, then you can basically tell who most of these enemies are, but still, I do miss fighting an avalanche of Dugs, or Breads, or Simons, or Elgato, or whoever. It adds a lot of charm to the game for me, but that's obviously not a big deal, since this game has charm for days. The only real downside of this game is that it has quite a bit of that NES flicker, especially when sprites line up on top of each other, but it's definitely not a deal breaker or anything like that. So yeah, I highly recommend checking out Mighty Final Fight. The controls are extremely simple, the hit detection is spot on, and the graphics and facial expressions throughout this playthrough are really entertaining. It's a very short game, you can beat this one in 20 or 25 minutes, but it's a great one to revisit again with a different character. This game just flies by, it's an entertaining way to kill a half an hour. Unfortunately, this is one of those NES cartridges that has an insane price tag, usually going for around 300 bucks on eBay and at conventions. But thankfully, this game was re-released on Game Boy Advance as part of the Capcom Classics Mini Mix, which also includes Bionic Commando and the NES version of Strider. And that cartridge usually goes for less than 20 bucks, so you're much better off with that if you're looking for a physical copy. Other than that, though, this is one game you'll have to play any way you can. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.